Hello, and welcome to another of our online Reflection for Learning activities. This is the first of two small exercises which are on the theme of letting comfort guide practice. The inspiration for this one, um, one of the inspirations anyway, is some work from Moshi Feldenkrais on teaching movement skills. And this is a quote where he talks about how it's really important to shift your attention from getting to an outcome, from getting a result, to paying attention to how you are doing what you're doing, if you want to learn well. And he really encourages, and you'll see, I, I think, some of the advantages of that, moving backwards and forwards between the precision of the instructions you're trying to follow and noticing how that's working for you and adjusting how you do what you do to respect what actually is helpful for you. And if you just notice the last part of that, in the movement skills work he's doing, um, he's looking for what do you actually find pleasurable? What do you actually enjoy? And part of the teaching logic there is that the things we really enjoy doing are the things we'll embrace and they'll become part of how we do what we do. So whereas we often don't direct people's attention to noticing what, what's pleasurable, um, actually, if you can help people notice how to do things in a way that they enjoy doing, you're giving them a really good platform for developing and embodying um, these skills. So we're gonna do a super little simple exercise now. Um, if you're in a classroom, you could get people to put their hand, um, either hand flat down on a table or something, some, something comfortable. We're all gonna put our hands up on our shoulders or somewhere up that way um, so that you can see what we're all doing. And it's a very simple little exercise. So just take a moment to relax and arrive here, ready to do a little exercise. And when you're ready, just gently and slowly move your index finger up from the table. I've just noticed that it says, forgive it, we actually mean finger up, um, up from the table. So moving your index finger up from the table, just a little. Gently and slowly. And as you're doing that, notice how the moving feels and notice that at some point you'll feel like you're straining. So at that point, back off, back off from that point and stay within the range that feels comfortable. Moving your finger up and down, only just so it's comfortable. And notice that you might find that no movement at all is comfortable. You might wanna just leave your, your hands resting quietly on the surface. Maybe not even imagining moving, if that's actually more comfortable for you. So with your finger on your hand, moving up and down or not moving, whatever's more comfortable. And our goal here is to notice that we can each tell quite precisely where our comfort lies, what range of moving is actually comfortable for us here. It could be, could be doing nothing at all, it might be imagining, but not actually physically moving. It might be a small range of movement. It might be a larger one. And um, all of it, I'm hoping, is nice and slow and gentle. So you can keep your awareness on how the moving feels. So when you feel ready, we'll just come back and just uh, reflect a little more on the exercise. So how did you find the exercise of noticing what, what degree of movement, if any, felt comfortable for you? Could you tell um, how did that um, shape what you did? Yeah, go for it, Marina. I felt it all very comfortable. I really enjoyed being able to focus on such a, a micro, a really small part of my body, I guess, and a limb. And so it was smooth and easy and a wonderful way to forget about other things that are happening and just to focus in the moment. Lovely. And it was, it was easy to tell where the smooth, where the comfort was, where, the, where to stop and stuff like that. I wasn't finding discomfort. Maybe it was comfortable. Yeah. Cool. And Louise? I was just going to say that um, 
as I was doing it, and, and I did a few different things um, when I was listening to what you were saying, Greg, and it reminded me that often when we need to do something, we just go and do it, you know, in a particular way. We don't think about the different ways we might approach it. And so I was doing, you know, the, the same outcome was occurring, but I was moving my finger in different ways, at, you know, in, at different speeds, at mm -hmm. different times, but still achieving the same outcome. And I think that's mm -hmm. a good reminder that uh, there are multiple approaches we can take to the mm -hmm. same thing. Mm, that's really cool because that kind of exploration is is how you kind of find your way to, to do it your way I know and you can do multiple ways too which whichever way works for you best at a particular time yeah it's lovely and you can cater or not if you want to yeah, if you want to comment oh only that I again took the um I guess the permission that you gave to to just relax and I did move my finger a little bit but I just yeah, felt that I was able to just rest and, you know, mm. in the moment, but probably more broadly rather than focusing mm. just on my finger. Mm. Yeah. So the thing that's really precious about that, which all these diverse responses show, is that each of us can discern what actually is comfortable for us. We can actually, so if you get practice instructions, it's very easy to think that following a practice instruction is, oh, I've got to do what it says. But actually, if you really want to help people learn, and if you want to learn yourself, noticing in a much more subtle and fine-grained way what actually is helpful for you gives you a much stronger platform for actually taking in what it's all about and finding what actually works for you personally, which is really the goal if you're trying to develop practice skills. So this is um, a new exercise, but we will hopefully be putting out a second edition of our Reflection for Learning Guide and including this and others in it. There's a lot more general background in the guide, um, uh, which provides a kind of context for this kind of reflective practice work, including for exercises like this. So please, um, it's available for free from Advanced HE. The URL is down there on the bottom of the slide. So we'd encourage you to go and have a look. And if you'd um, like to give us some feedback, we'd be delighted to get it. And you can send it to us at this email address, reflection4lc at gmail.com. So thanks very much for doing this tiny little exercise and we hope that you've enjoyed it and that it makes some difference to your teaching or learning.